Hi, welcome to Wharf, and it's been a couple of months since we did an update on where we are with the black stuff and coal. Um, last time I was joined by Chris Price, who's the official spokesperson of the HRA to do with coal, but I'm without him today, so hi Chris. Um, I just thought I'd give you an update on where we are. So we're struggling on. We've uh, been trying some different bits and bobs, and we've sort of now exposed the, the last of the Welsh lump coal, uh, which we're using up. Uh, we have been using the ovoids, and I haven't got one here to even to show you, because I think they've all gone. But ovoids is a product that is a cold compressed, uh, cold dust and fines into an ovoid. And then now we've used that on the locos. And that's been okay. It's, if it was the only thing that was possible to use, then we would survive. Um, but it creates quite a lot of ash after it's been used and a lot of clinker. So okay, but not brilliant. So what else we've been using? Last time we talked about e coal and that, uh, that worked well. Uh, we were quite pleased with that. The difference with the e-coal is it's, if you remember, a hot molasses bound nugget. So it's much more stable, much more dense. You get less ash with that. Um, and we also then moved on to wildfire. And wildfire is, is very similar, same sort of nugget, but it's not got the biomass in it. So that is what we have coming next because that's been the most popular with our crews. So next Monday, we have 20 tons of that coming. Um, and we'll come on to what we're going to do in the future after we've had an update from Chris. And he's going to update us on the other thing we've been trying, which is rape seed nuggets. So over to Chris to show us what we've been doing. Just about to set off on an evening trip up the railway with number six and a set of coaches. And we've been given some of this stuff to try as a substitute for coal. This is a briquette made of waste product from making uh, or extracting rapeseed oil. Uh, it's a free sample. Um, we're going to give it a try. At the moment, we chuck the old fire out completely. It's in the hopper wagon. And um, we've lit up using this, which ignited from the embers of the old fire uh, quite readily, actually. And there's Steve filling up the bunker with, with all these, these briquettes, which are green in colour. They do stink a bit, but we'll, we'll see how it goes um, on the trip. So we got back. In one piece. Yeah, in one piece. Yeah, and quite impressed with it actually. There was very, it was compared to coal, where you get clouds of dust coming out of the bunker, it was quite clean to use. It made steam, it didn't make any clinker. We used quite a lot of it, but that, with a normal fireman, you'd probably use a little bit less. Um, it made, as I say, it made, it made plenty of steam. Um, the it, fast it, response as well, I think that's quite key. It seems yeah. to be, it, it seems to respond quite quickly once you put the, uh, the particles on. So yeah. And you do get brain smoke, so you can tell whether yeah. the fire is correct or not, yeah. which is quite good. Yeah. Uh, no clinker, as we say, um, but it, it does use it. We've used about half a bunker on one trip with just four empty bogies. So and we didn't do the wharf to Pendray bit either. No, that's true. But yeah, quite impressed with it. Otherwise. It, uh, it, because of the shape of it, it don't, you do sort of chase it around the floor a little bit. It doesn't always stay on the, on the shuffle, but maybe that's me. Um, but otherwise, it seems to be quite good. Yeah, I think it's a, it's a really good starting yeah. point, actually. I mean, we've only done one trip with it, but it's been... I'd be a bit surprised, actually, at how good it is. So I think we, I mean, there's lots more work to do and lots more types of trains and weights of trains to try and different circumstances, but I think it's a really good start. Once it had gone out, there was yeah. a fair bit of ash in the fire, but once you poke it around with the, yeah. with the bar, the ash goes through the, yeah. through the fire bars. So. Mm. Pumped we, on. We didn't hang about either with the train, so it, it did a reasonable <laughs> amount of work. So. Righto, yep. So there we are. That's, uh, that's something very interesting and new for us, and we're working with that manufacturer to see if we can uh, get some more and keep it trialled. It not liking wet is not great in Wales, but it's always like this, it's always like this. So you join us on our half term week and it's been really busy on the railway. So you can see we've got the, uh, the loco in readiness. We've always got one in steam waiting for the train to come back so we can have a quick turnaround. So we're gonna get through our, the rest of our coal very quickly. So I say we have got wildfire coming next week to be our next load, but the good news is that um, Fossifam, which is where we get the Welsh lump coal from, has actually repaired its washing plant, which is the thing that stopped us getting lump coal, and is now able to supply it. Now that's only until the end of the, uh, this year, because that's when the license expires, and hopefully they are uh, 
submitting a license extension for two years to the Welsh Government so they can extend their extraction, which would be good for us. I was uh, one of uh, eight railways that uh, represented uh, the Heritage Railway movement at the Senneth, the Welsh Government offices in Cardiff a couple of weeks ago, and we made our point very strongly that we do rely on having a local coal production facility is very important to us. So we made our point strongly and made sure they saw how much of a, an impact we have on the, the local environment and tourism in the area. And play our part in, in explaining where coal fits in, in Wales. It's such a, a pivotal part of how the, the uh, country was built. So wildfires coming, that's costing us about uh, 350, 350 pounds a tonne. Put that in context, we were paying sort of 180, 190, uh, 180, 190 pounds a tonne pre-COVID uh, or pre uh, the, the crisis. Um, we've heard that uh, FOSS, fossil fan lump coal, is now going to be possibly four or five hundred pound a tonne. So you can see instantly that our cost of fueling our locos is trebled. So that's, that's a worry, but I think we can make sure that we uh, bring more people to the railway to enjoy a day out and make it pay uh, per head, because the more people we can have behind a loco, the more economical it is. So we've got lots of things going on. We're still looking at alternatives and we'll keep you updated, but to make it pay, come and have a ride. See you soon.